Hello and welcome to this Kangaroo Math Contest review session. Today we're going to be solving problems related to angles and triangles, but first let's review a little bit of the theory to get started. So first of all, we have a pretty useful property, which is that there are 180 degrees in a straight line. What does this mean? Well, if I draw a straight line and I pick three points on the straight line, so here we have the points C, O, and A, which all lie along this line. And if I ask what is the angle COA, the answer is 180 degrees. And the reason why this is useful is because we can break this big 180 degree angle into smaller sub angles whose sum will always be 180 degrees. So for example, in this diagram, I have a blue arc here and a red arc here. And if we ask what is the sum of their angles? Well, it's going to be 180 degrees. So let's say we know what the angle COB is, then we would be able to determine the angle AOB based on this. A second useful property is that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. So here I have a triangle with vertices labeled A, B, and C, and it has angles labeled alpha, beta, and gamma. And now note that this property tells us that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 180 degrees. Next, we arrive at the concept of an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is one in which exactly two out of its three sides are of equal length. Now, a property of an isosceles triangle is that the two base angles are always equal. So basically, you're going to have two angles in your isosceles triangle, which are the same. And these two angles are going to be the angles corresponding to the sides of equal length. So in this diagram, for example, the triangle is isosceles because AC equals BC. And so the base angles are equal, i.e. alpha, this angle here, equals gamma. Next, there's the concept of a right triangle or a right angle triangle. Now, a right triangle is one in which exactly one angle is of 90 degrees. Now, the longest side of a right triangle, which corresponds to the 90 degree angle, is called the hypotenuse of the triangle. So, for example, in this diagram, I have a right triangle because the angle alpha is 90 degrees. And the side corresponding to the angle alpha, so the side opposite of this angle, is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So in this case, BC is the hypotenuse. Finally, we're going to look at a little theorem, which is going to come in handy for one of these problems, and then we'll be ready to get started. So the theorem tells us that if we have a right triangle, we can draw a circle whose center is at the midpoint of the hypotenuse, and this circle actually passes through the three vertices of the triangle. So in this diagram, D is the midpoint of the hypotenuse, which means it's halfway between B and between C. And the circle is centered at this point D, and it passes through the points A, B, and C. Now, the reason why this can be useful is because we know that a circle has a fixed radius, so the distance from the center of a circle to any point on its circumference is the same. So what this tells us is that the distance between the points A and D is the same as the distance between the points B and D, which is also the same as the distance between the points C and D. Or in other words, AD equals BD equals CD. Let's hop into the problems now. The first one is the following. The picture shows an isosceles triangle in which AB equals AC. If PQ is perpendicular to AB, an angle BPC is 120 degrees, an angle ABP is 50 degrees, then what is angle PBC? Well, the first thing we can do is label our diagram with the angles that we know. So we're given that BQP is 90 degrees because we're told that PQ is perpendicular to AB. So it means that this line segment meets this line segment at a 90 degree angle. Next, we're told that BPC is 120 degrees and 
ABP is 50 degrees. So first of all, let's determine the angle BPQ. Now note that B, P, and Q form a triangle, and we already know two of the interior angles of this triangle. So the sum of the three angles has to be 180 degrees. So we can easily determine the angle B, P, Q to be 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 50 degrees, because 90 degrees and 50 degrees are the two angles that we know. And so the angle B, P, Q turns out to be 40 degrees. Next, let's determine the angle APQ. So note that we have a straight line here, APC. And so the angle APC has to be 180 degrees. But note that APC can be broken into three angles, namely the angle BPC, the angle BPQ, and the angle APQ. So basically, we know that APQ plus BPQ plus BPC is equal to 180 degrees. And we actually know two of those angles already. So we can determine APQ to be equal to 180 degrees minus 40 minus 120 degrees, which turns out to be 20 degrees. So I've labeled this 20 degree angle. And note that we also know that the angle AQP is 90 degrees because, well, we have a straight line here, AQB. And we know that this angle BQP is 90 degrees. So this one also has to be 90 degrees. So next, what we'd like to do is determine the angle QAP. And well, this is easy because we have a triangle in which we know two of its three internal angles. So the third angle is just 180 degrees minus the sum of the other two angles. So we find that QAP is equal to 180 minus 20 minus 90 degrees, which turns out to be 70 degrees. So now we've actually labeled a lot of the different angles on this triangle, and we're getting pretty close to determining the angle PBC. So next we'd like to determine the angle ABC. Now note that 180 degrees is going to be equal to ABC plus ABC plus 70 degrees. The reason for this is that we're told that we have an isosceles triangle. And so the angle ABC is actually equal to the angle ACB here. So the sum of this angle plus this angle is just ABC plus ABC. And finally, we know that this third angle here is 70 degrees. So the sum of the three angles is 180. Two of the angles are equal to the angle ABC, and the third angle is equal to 70 degrees. So we can solve this equation for ABC to get 180 degrees is equal to two times the angle ABC plus 70 degrees, which if we solve for ABC gives the angle ABC is equal to 55 degrees. So basically, the angle PBC, which is this angle here, is going to be equal to the angle ABC, this larger angle, minus this 50 degrees here. So we'll get 55 minus 50 equals 5 degrees. So the answer to our problem is A. The second problem we're going to solve is the following. We have a figure, and we're told that in the figure, the angle alpha is 7 degrees. A point A1 is chosen on one of the rays forming the angle, and the segments A1, A2, A2, A3, and so on are drawn, each segment of equal length to the segment O, A1. The question is, what is the greatest number of segments that can be drawn in this way? So first of all, note that each triangle in this sequence has to be an isosceles triangle. Now, the reason for this is that we're told that the length of the line segment OA1 is the same as the length of the line segment A1A2, which is the same as the line, length of the line segment A2A3, and so on. And so we see that each of these triangles has two sides of equal length. So they must have two base angles, which are equal. 
Now in this first triangle, which is formed by the vertices O, A1, and A2, we see that the base angle is alpha. So two of the angles of this triangle are alpha. So the third angle, which we can determine to be 180 minus alpha minus alpha, or in other words, 180 minus two alpha. Now, given this angle, 180 minus two alpha, we can actually determine the base angle of the second triangle in our sequence, namely this triangle here. Because we know that, for example, O, A1, A3 are three points that lie along a straight line. And we know the angle O, A1, A2 is 180 minus two alpha. So we can determine the angle A2, A1, A3 to be 180 minus 180 minus two alpha, which is just two alpha. So the measure of the base angle, the second triangle is two alpha. Now we can iterate this process as many times as we want, and we'll find that the base angle of the third triangle is going to be three times alpha. The base angle of the fourth triangle is going to be four times alpha and so on and so forth. In general, the base angle of the kth triangle will be k times alpha. Now the question is, how many of these triangles can we draw? Well, we know that the sum of the interior angles of these triangles is two times k times alpha plus the third angle. And this sum has to be 180 degrees because of course the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So we will run into a problem once two times k times alpha is bigger than or equal to 180 degrees because that would imply that the third angle is actually less than or equal to zero, which is not possible. And so the answer is we can draw k triangles where k is the smallest integer such that two times k times alpha is less than 180 degrees. So we can easily solve this. We see that because alpha equals seven, two times 12 times alpha is 168, which is less than 180. Whereas two times 13 times alpha is 182, which is of course greater than 180. So we see that the largest integer k satisfying two times k times alpha less than 180 is k equals 12. So we can draw 12 triangles of this type before we encounter an issue. Now notice that to draw the first triangle, we connected A1 with A2, so we drew one line segment. To draw two triangles, we drew one plus one equals two line segments. So to draw 12 triangles, we can easily see that we would have to draw 12 line segments. So to, the answer to our question is C, 12 line segments. Now we're ready for our third and final question. We have a triangle, ABC, and we're told that C is a right angle. We're also told that M is the midpoint of the hypotenuse AB, and that the angle A is 60 degrees we're asked to find the measure of the angle BMC. Now, because of the theorem we saw about how we can draw a circle centered at the midpoint of the hypotenuse that passes through the points A, B, and C, we actually see that the length of the line segment AM has to be equal to the length of the line segment CM. So what this tells us is that the angle ACM has to be equal to the line segment, sorry, to the angle CAM. Because in fact, this is maybe an isosceles triangle or maybe an equilateral triangle, but certainly these two sides are of the same length. And so the, these two angles have to be the same. So this tells us that the angle ACM is 60 degrees. Now, if we know two angles of the triangle, we can easily determine the third angle, AMC, and this angle will be 180 minus 60 minus 60, which is, of course, 60. So what this tells us is that the three angles in this triangle are all equal to 60 degrees. And when we're asked to find the angle BMC, it's a simple matter of computing 180 degrees, because we have a straight line here, minus 60 degrees, which is this angle 
CMA or AMC if you prefer. So we find that 180 minus 60 is 120. And so the angle is going to be 120 degrees. So the answer to our problem is D, 120. Now this concludes this lesson, so I thank you very much for your attention.